If you could travel back in time, what type of tradesman would you be? So where did all those colors come from? An insect called the cochineal makes the color red. Brown comes from walnuts, blue from indigo, purple comes from the Spanish logwood tree, turmeric from India gives the yellow its hue, and orange comes from the root of the matter plant. You may think that being a weaver is just for pansies, but think again. Men and women both chose this profession to support their families. So maybe making clothes isn't for you. Let's look at a few other trades that you can choose from. Aha! A shoemaker! What a great idea! Everyone has feet. See? Right there. There are five sets of feet that need shoes. So how many hours do you think it took to make one pair of shoes? It took 8 to 14 hours for one pair of shoes. Shoemakers were paid by pace, so the faster you worked, the more shoes you made, the more money you got paid. Although there were many feet to cover in Colonial Williamsburg, it was a fierce competition. At one time, there were over 40 shoemaker shops in the area. If you think shoemaking is too smelly for you, then maybe you enjoy making all chili. So what was he doing in the video? He was using a bellows. It's an apparatus for producing a strong current of air in order to heat up the fire. Being a gunsmith is a lot of work. Let's keep traveling back in time to find some other trades we might enjoy. Why would a carpenter and joiner be important? In a century when most structures were built from wood, no tradesman was more useful than the carpenter and joiner. The main business of the colonial carpenter was to cut and join timber and board into sturdy wooden homes and shops. perform this trade? Well, much of the work was accomplished by slaves that such builders owned or hired. Large numbers of slaves, skilled and unskilled, helped construct the colonial capital. Carpenters were also hired to do repair work, build additions to existing structures, or to make smokehouses, dairies, 
necessaries, and other outbuildings. So maybe you're not handy at fixing houses and would rather tackle some smaller projects. Let's take a look at the Cooper. Being a Cooper required skill, strength, and intelligence. Coopers often crafted casks which held flour, gunpowder, and tobacco. Why might the Cooper be important for trade? Or why would he be important in town? Would a man or female be a Cooper? If making buckets isn't for you, maybe you would like cooking. Maybe you're like me and you don't like to cook. Maybe the art of beauty interests you more. So what do you think the pole with blue stripes represent? A pole with red stripes represented that you could get bleated. A pole with blue stripes represented that you could just get your hair cut. In colonial times, a barber and a surgeon were considered almost equal. People would go to the barber to get bleated until the year of 1740. Where do you think they got all the hair to make the wigs? Well, hair was obtained from humans and various animals such as yaks, goats, and horses. Which do you think was the most expensive wig to make? If making wigs and cutting hair is a little too hairy for you, then maybe you enjoy working with wood. So what items do you think were made in the cabinet maker's shop? Cabinet makers in colonial Virginia produced anything from fine furniture to caskets. One of Virginia's cabinet makers most impressive productions for households were tea and china tables used for entertaining guests. So which trade do you think is best for you? What trade do you have more questions about? There are many more trades we do not have time to explore, such as a basket maker, a blacksmith, a farmer, a printer and binder, a silversmith, and a wheelwright. So if you would like to learn more about one of the trades seen in the video or one listed above, go to www history.org and search trades and begin to explore.